Maybe you saw this picture of Ted Danson in blackface. He was at a private banquet last Friday night to roast his girlfriend, Whoopi Goldberg. To some, it was all in good fun, but other guests felt Danson had gone over the line. Well, that's something many people feel this man does every weekday morning. He's Howard Stern, who's become one of the most powerful voices in radio today by pushing the limits of decency and free speech. Tonight, you decide. Does Howard Stern go too far? And an interesting Stern power. We're back with the Howard Stern Show. Good morning, everybody. Every workday, some four million listeners oh, yeah? tune in for their daily dose of Howard Stern. The sex talk. God, I'd love to have you naked in my bed right now. I would love to have you naked right now. The intimate questions. Are those breast implants? No. Really? Those are your own jugs? Those are your own jugs? The listener phone calls. What is it, you creep? What are you afraid of? No. no are you a criminal? No. And what are you worried about? It's just another day at the office for the bad boy of the airwaves, who has talked his way into more cars, kitchens, and bedrooms than anyone in the history of morning radio. Are you a student of radio history? Not at all. Couldn't tell you anything about it. I know Marconi invented it. Uh, I'm sure if he had found out that I would benefit from his invention, he probably would have smashed the damn thing. <laughs> Fans find his sexual banter, off-the-wall commentary, and celebrity interviews outrageously entertaining. What is it? Uh, Latoya's here. Oh, good. She looks absolutely incredible. Does Her she? Her body is in just unbelievable shape. Yeah, she looks real good. She'll be taking the witness stand in here as Howard Stern uh, courtroom begins. Oh, no. I'm calling the first witness. Is she coming in to defend her brother? You are wearing the tightest stretch pants. You can't possibly be wearing panties. <laughs> That's very much on purpose. Oh, how could you say that? Oh, I can say anything. This is my show. <laughs> and detractors say that's precisely the problem. Howard, Howard, you're a jerk. We're going to put you out of work. They say on any given day, Stern, spurred on by his partner Robin Quivers, manages to say something outrageous about someone, whether it's a woman, a minority, a celebrity, a stutterer, even his own mother. The woman's pathetic. She's so weak. She needs me. Oh, my Howard, my Howard. I swear to God, I think she's, she's hot for me or something. She wants me to kiss her on her lips. I'm like, I don't want to kiss you on your lips. You're my mother, for Christ's sake. I think my mother wants to get it on with me. The critics say that you are constantly crossing the boundary of bad taste. Mm -hmm. I don't that, think that's valid. Wrong. Valid. Yeah, that's valid. I don't think that's wrong. I don't think that's wrong to be in bad taste. Is there anything that you consider taboo? No. Nothing. I would talk about anything. Don't you need to be somewhat concerned about about the community in which you're broadcasting? Uh, I, I've often said that the community in which I broadcast is filled with priests that rape young boys that the people murder each other in the streets. I mean, my community? You mean something that I say could possibly shock that community? I, I can't imagine it. We're back with the Howard Stern Show. All right, we're here with Rhonda Shear. On the morning we visited Howard's studio on New York's Madison Avenue, this guest dropped by the promoter pictorial in Playboy. And if you think what you're about to hear is raunchy, keep in mind Howard's gone a lot further, further than we can show you in prime time. Take off your red jacket. They can't see my breasts? Well, yeah. They're, they're hanging a little. T Look, he's shooting my breasts. Yeah, like, like that hasn't been done before. <laughs> so how does Rhonda make a living? Rhonda well, makes a living going out and spreading yeah. her legs in Playboy. Yeah, that's your references to women are almost always obsessed with their looks, their bodies. Many feel, and even some men feel, that you are demeaning to them at I times. I think I'm demeaning to all people at times. You know what I mean? I don't know that uh, my personality is a guarded personality. You see, Stone... You have to worry about how you come off to women or men or your public. But I don't really care if uh, women find me offensive, and I don't care if men find me offensive. I don't even care. Are you guys not getting pictures of my book cover um, from that angle? I can adjust that. What? Hold on. <laughs> and that'll help you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're personable. You anyway. are engaging. Dare I say, even polite. I'm a phony in real life. In, <laughs> in, yeah. in real life. And yet, when you get behind the microphone... I'll let you this... know exactly what I think. I've even done that with you. I, after I sit with you and we have a nice conversation, I then get on the air and talk about how I really feel about you. How, how angry I am that you're this good-looking man who, who, who uh, walks into a room. I work on my hair for two hours, try to get an image together. I'm wearing ridiculous costumes. You walk in, women are falling all over you. Somehow, this attack dog demeanor sets in. I'm angry. Come on, look at you. 
I'm captivated. I'm going to kiss you, for God's sakes, before the interview's over. Ah, uh, mother. <laughs> See, I have a mother. Isn't that great? I have a mother. Satan has a mother. Despite his devilish on-air persona, Howard is, by all accounts, a devoted family man. Oh, look at that. Don't start with me, Howard. Don't start with me. I my sister wants to meet you, yeah. We spent an afternoon with the Stearns here at Howard's parents' home just outside New York City. Come here, Father. Give me a kiss. On camera. On camera. The Stern men are not afraid to kiss. Howard grew up in Roosevelt, Long Island, a mostly black suburb, with his parents and older sister, Ellen. After high school, he went to Boston University, where he met his wife-to-be, Allison. They've now been married 15 years and have three friend? daughters. And yes, Allison is also fair game. I tied my wife up one night. Yeah. I don't mind telling Did you she what like I do. It? She whined and complained that she couldn't move and whined and screamed, and I untied her. But the whole idea of tying her up was so that even if she complained, she had to yeah. stay tied up. When Howard starts talking about your private life, your sex life, mm -hmm. does that, does that embarrass you? Sometimes it gets to me. It depends. You know, some certain things are exaggerated and certain things are taken out of context. But, you know, I let him have a good time with it. What are you looking at me for? <laughs> Do you ever worry about how your wife or your parents will react to things you say on the air? It has caused problems from time to time. My wife has gotten mad at me from time to time, like when I went on the air and talked about her miscarriage, and it, it, it made her feel real bad. I think I just assumed it was a private incident in our personal life. Obviously a miscarriage, a very, very delicate, sensitive subject for you. Right. We've just had... been through that. Well, listen, and I felt that that was material for the air. I felt that if I'm going to go on the air and talk about everyone else, I'm open for a little ridicule as well. But does that include your wife? Uh, yeah, evidently. Because have you ever said anything on the radio that you have regretted saying? No, never. Never. Never regretted saying anything. I don't apologize for anything I've ever said, and I don't regret anything I've ever said. Do you regret having hurt anybody's feelings? I guess on some level, if I've hurt somebody's feelings, I, um, I don't want to see anybody uh, sit there and, uh, you know, that, that's kind of a weird question, actually. I, I don't think I regret it, no. I don't. I don't think I do. You hurt your wife Allison's feelings, I think, yeah. when you talked about the miscarriage, don't, don't you? I mean, in retrospect, she now realizes that it was probably no big deal, but at the time it did hurt her feelings, and I guess I really didn't understand uh, why she felt so bad about it. And that's my failure, I guess, as a human being. What's in the news? Well, some not so good news. A 40-year-old Manhattan woman was walking her dog in Central Park and was grabbed by a man who forced her into the woods and raped her. Wow. So they are now looking for a suspect. Animals. Let me be mayor. I'll clean up the city. You are at your most controversial when you're commenting on the daily headlines, the news right. of the day. Right. There's a rape in New York City. You start in with how fed up you are with all the violence. And if you were mayor, you'd clean it all up. I would. Fine. But then you go on to talk about the Los Angeles riots. Right. And how that was a perfect opportunity to get rid of all the, quote, maniacs. Right. Some of your black listeners were upset. What is it, Baba Booey? Uh, people are still pretty riled up about the whole black thing. So now there's a black woman on the phone. Well, what, she, what, what she, she said, want from me? I'm she said that, against black she said, why do you say that only blacks rape? Did I didn't say, say that? Did I say do, uh, blacks only rape? I'm I never said that. Anything. You're so riled up, you can't even think straight. What about you? You You're, hate the black people so bad that you... I don't hate the, the black radio, people. I don't hate any people. about blacks. I hate you, but I don't hate black people. Well, good. You hate you. You hate me, but you don't hate black people. What color am I? Green? I just want to go on and entertain people. And the way I entertain people is by being honest and sort of following my instinct. And as outrageous and politically incorrect as possible. Yeah, it's not calculated. You are the dumbest caller I've ever had. You're as stupid as a wall. Goodbye. The stupidest caller I ever had. Freaking retard. Even though this kind of talk can be offensive, it's been great for business. Stern's show is syndicated to 14 cities and is at or near the top in New York, Boston, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia. What was it that you saw in Howard Stern that you liked? Lots of revenue. Mel Carmazan is president of Infinity Broadcasting, the company that pays Stern's multi-million dollar contract. He has a decidedly upscale white-collar audience for the most part, doesn't he? That's correct. 
and that's uh, the demographic that uh, advertisers tend to be seeking, and that's why his show is uh, so enormously successful. Are you comfortable with all of the content all of the time? Um, personally comfortable that it's conforming to the regulation? Yes. Comfortable that it appeals to me all the time? Absolutely not. But always conforming to the law. But that's not how the Federal Communications Commission sees it. Over the past two years, the FCC has fined Infinity and others that carry the Stern broadcast more than a million dollars. The commission said remarks Stern made about sex and excretory functions violated contemporary community standards for decency. Stern says the fines are unfair, that what's being said matters less than who's saying it. What makes you feel that you're being singled out by the FCC? I see the Oprah show, the Geraldo show, the uh, Donahue show, I see soap operas. A lot of these shows are dealing with issues that I have been fined over. Uh, in fact, they go a lot further. Anyone that gets a fine feels that he's unfairly singled out. Yeah. FCC Chairman James Quello acknowledges the standard for indecency is subjective. But he says the distinction between Stern and other shows is real. What's the difference? Can you... Can you find and complaints do they what's the context are they uh, do they have people coming on to say how terrible this, this thing is that there's incest in the family it, it depends on what kind of a, a uh, really claim they can make that it has a redeeming social value in some cases as long as you're making some attempt to analyze it and to put it in context and to deal with the subject in a somewhat serious manner yes what have I been fined over? Asking a lesbian about her lifestyle? Oprah does that every day. I just don't sit there and give you the phony baloney crap about the psychiatrist telling her she might need to go see a shrink because she's not comfortable with her sexuality. The First Amendment doesn't say you have the right to free speech as long as you do it in a serious way. God, if you are telling me that a duty joke is going to send the United States government into a tizzy, you would laugh. It has. It has sent them into a tizzy. Though audience research shows Stern's listeners are mostly men, age 18 to 49, the FCC remains concerned that children might be listening, something we asked Howard's family about. Do you think that his uh, radio show is appropriate for kids generally? As a mother? I think basically it's, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. I would... Uh... But I think it's an adult show. It's not for children. It's an adult show. You don't let your, your no. children listen. My children don't even know I'm on the radio. They, uh -huh. um, they uh, think I'm a Harvard You're professor. Old. I'm sure <laughs> and Donahue, unfaithful spouses and their sweethearts. That's good. That's a good topic. So who is the real Howard Stern? Well, in the end, it's hard to say. We're going to leave now. He's a sensitive family man who wow. once prayed on the air that the FCC commissioners all die of Where cancer. He, He's an intensely private person who's made a career and a fortune prying into the private lives of others. He's a broadcaster accused of pandering to the lowest common denominator. Hold it. Yet recently invited to speak at Harvard, an invitation he declined. It's all a game of disguises and poses. That's really nice. I'm a guy who actually has removed the barrier of the microphone and all that showbiz nonsense, and I don't really care what people think about me. Can't you be funny and successful and yourself? without all the raunchiness? Oh, I think I am being myself. I, am, I have never been more comfortable than when I'm on the radio. I am very uncomfortable in my real life. I believe I'm role-playing in my, in my everyday life. And I think that the real Howard Stern is the guy on the air. Infinity Broadcasting says it will fight the fines leveled against Howard Stern all the way to the Supreme Court, if necessary. By the way, Stern's new book, called Private Parts, was released just last week. And guess who's already complaining that bookstores aren't giving it the promotion it deserves?